Hey y'all, how you doing today? I got my friend Max here. Say hi, Max. I'm happy to be here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and eventually we're going to get inside there in another day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You right, Max? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> okay. I have a unique uh, setup. For today, I've got a treat for you. And Max is going to help me introduce him. We have Jack Moore. More of Jack Moore. And he's going to show us our bug out bag and his updates on his rig. You were there when he was did the bug out bag. What did you think? It motivated me to do the same. And I've been carrying around an empty backpack since who knows how long. And I'm looking to what I could put into it. Yes. My bug out bag is so scattered right now. I got to get mine going too. He makes he makes me look very <laughs> his is so good so it's a real treat for you and we won't delay any longer let's get going with jack but i want to introduce you to my good Ooh, friend good max you. and we'll be doing a van tour of his big mm -hmm. minivan pretty soon so let's get the show on the road with jack moore Woo! sounds like a winner hello hi my name is jack moore and you've probably seen my video with me, Van Lee, a couple weeks ago uh, on my van tour. But I just did a couple little updates since I've been out here in Arizona. Uh, and I was telling Lee about it, so she said she'd like to, to videotape it. So just some things I picked up here locally and done a little bit differently. So I got this neat tapestry in town the other day. It's, I think it's very beautiful. And it's my collar, purple. Isn't that pretty? I think it is. I love it. It just goes with the the theme that I've got going on inside in the collars. Uh, it's easy to take out. I just bought some of these clamps like this. And I put this on the back so I can leave the back open just to vent it a little bit so it wouldn't be so hot but still be covered and have some privacy. I bought me some netting and I'm gonna figure out how to put some netting in here and this so that I can just pull this back and allow the breeze through and still have netting to keep insects and stuff out. But that's the way it is now. I'm gonna take these off so you can see inside real quick. Where did you get the clamps? Where can everybody get these? These clamps were K and B okay. in town. It's a, a store that's like a hardware. They got boarding goods. They got a little bit of everything in there. So it's kind of neat just going to look around and see what all they've got. Do you think Walmart would sell them too? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Walmart. And has like maybe this. Ace. Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight. I have seen okay. the Harbor Freight before, yes. Yeah. Um, but just kind of neat. So I'm just going to roll this up for now so we can show you what's going on in here. Uh, normally this goes up here, but it's not there right now. Um, the other thing, I've, I'm going to go around here. I'm going to move my guitar out of the way. I had it laying there. I like this because Jack keeps his bed clear. Usually all people, the time. There might yeah. be an instrument or two laying on it. I had my uh, one of my flutes out last night playing. So it's still there. Um, but in town, I just added a little bit, a little few touches to it. Got a hand painted feather that uh, real Native American, so hand painted. So I picked that up in town. Um, when I was in town, I got a few things. Found this amethyst, which is very beautiful, and it's my purple. And how is this on here so it doesn't move? I just got the Velcro. Just oh, like okay. That. Okay. I got the Velcro big roll of it. Okay. I just cut it. Put it on my stick on. I just cut it and okay. put it on. So it's just Very Velcro. nice, yeah. Yeah, so it's just that. Of course, I showed you all this before. So I picked this up uh, in town just to burn. Um, it's just like a, a smudge shell. That's what they call it. And this is like a different wood and uh, some sage. I got some white sage. I got some sage with lavender in it. Um, I just got a few little bundles of it so I can burn for the for the smell, the aroma. Um, it goes with all the Native American things that I've got kind of going on. Pick yeah. up a couple dream catchers. Oh yeah! Oh look at that. Um, these ones are supposedly made by 
actual um, Navajo Native Americans. Ah. It actually had the lady's name that made it. Um, I got a purple one this size. And then I also, I don't know if you can see it up front. Let me, let me get in there. Open. Let's get it. I got a smaller one. It's kind of a teal color. Yeah. And I looked, and this one was made by the same lady. So I got mm -hmm. two of them was made wow. uh, by the same. So just a little bit of decoration. And, and there's, there's Elmo on the dash. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's the Elmo. Yeah. I got this is a real leather. Is a Native American oh, I love that. medicine yeah. bag. You can put some of your, you know, herbs or whatever you got in there. So, you've yeah. been exploring quartzite a lot more than I have. I've been exploring and buying little knickknacks and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, just a, just a few things just to make it more homey and and kind of decorate it the way I wanted to. So not a whole lot and not a whole lot of money. Just just little stuff here and there. So, but it's like I like it's it's nice and I like it this way. So yes. So we'll go with. So, oh, Jack has that. another treat for us coming up here next. Next, I am working on getting a YouTube channel up and going. Yes. Um, hopefully within a week or so. Yes. We'll have that up and going. And uh, right now, I think it's just going to be my name, Jack Moore. Um, I was floating around some other ideas in my mind, but right now, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, so you can check, look for that. Uh, but hopefully, have that up and running within a week or so. Yes. So yeah. Um, I'm going to try to do some something a little bit different. I am going to do some van tours and show some stuff like that on van life. Um, but I'm also going to do a little bit of other things. I want to do a lot of hiking, uh, a lot of adventure, like hiking through the desert, uh, forest, doing some stuff, doing some actual camping, uh, just showing different things. Um, not going to specifically just do one thing. I just want to keep it kind of open, just my life. Uh, wherever I go, the jobs I pick up or everything I do, I just want to kind of share it. And... Um, just some of the experiences. Well, thank you for but. updating us on everything in here. It's a gorgeous rig you have, well, thank and you. it's very stylish. Thank you. But we for all sure. knew that anyway. So, yes. Now <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. More proof. We have more proof. Yeah. Oh yeah, Joanne nice. gave those one to Joanne everybody. Yeah. Was here. Magnets. I put that right there. So fifty see. pounds, isn't it? She said fifty I think pounds. Something like that. It's. It's. I mean, it's strong. What have you been using yours for? I've actually hung like a towel there. Yeah. Or like I've had shirts hanging in where I'm like changing or something like that. So. Right. But it's handy. I just keep it right there. Yeah. I just hang it right outside the door. And you just drive with it there. <laughs> yeah. It ain't, ain't going to come off. It's good. So. Oh, very nice. Oh, uh, thank you, Jack, for the update. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. No problem. Okay. Hi, Jack. Hello. We have Jack's bug out bag and he's going to show us what he carries in his bug out bag. And honestly, this is going to be a really good good video and something you really want to pay attention to because why do we need a bug out bag jack we need a bug out bag just in case i mean everything has been going on in america and all over the world here lately i mean with the covid and the riots and uh, just the the civil unrest in america anymore you just never know uh, i always try to keep a bag ready uh, the reason we're doing this video when we did my uh, van tour uh, i had a lot of comments personal actually just sent to me on Facebook and Messenger asking about the bug out bag, what I had in it, if I would show what was in it, um, and the purpose of it. So I was talking to Lee about it, so we just decided to do a little video. Um, and this ain't a perfect bug out bag. I modify it where I go um, because there's no set way to have it. I just want to show you the items I have in it now um, and explain why I have those items. But, you know, you can change it. But there's, you know, certain staple items you should have in all bags. Um, but it's just, just in case. It's a bag designed if something happens and you had to flee on foot um, or in a vehicle, whatever, if you're in a home. Enough stuff where you can basically survive for the next 72 hours to where you can get somewhere that's safe or stable uh, where you can get back on your feet. Um, you know, some people have a lot bigger bag than this. This is only a 39 liter bag. Um, and the reason I've got this size bag, a couple reasons, uh, but I do a lot of international travel. And so I carry, this as my backpack when I go as my carry on and they have a maximum of a 40 liter. So now I'm thinking about getting a little bit bigger bag, maybe a 50 or 52 liter so I can put a little bit more in it, uh, because it can get pretty full. Um, but you want to get one in proportion with your size. 
you know, if you're small in stature, a female, you don't want a 70 liter, you know, weighs 80 pounds. You're Do you know what the, what the guidelines are, the percentage of your weight, isn't it? And I think there's a guideline of percentage. There is a guideline. I've seen different, a couple of different ones. We can add it on. But I don't go by that. Okay. I, I would say load it down with what you think you want, put it on your back, adjust it to where it's comfortable, and go hike with it. I mean, if you got a lower backache within a half hour, you know, you've got too much weight. Okay. Um, but a female, they're going to want a little bit smaller bag. You know, if you're six foot four, 250 pound male, you probably, you know, you could probably handle a 60, 70 liter bag pretty easy and put a lot of stuff in there. Um, you know, some people put tents, everything else. Um, I've got, as you'll see here in a few minutes, I've got emergency shelter in there, but I do not have a tent or anything like that. Um, and a lot of people load them down with food and water. I don't do that at all. Um, and I'll explain that as I go. Um, but I got this pack at Cabela's. Um, I've had it for about three years uh, and it's been on a lot of domestic and international flights and it's held up pretty good. Um, it's been through at least four countries, maybe five, um, and it's held up good. And I've carried it a lot of places. So, uh, and I think Cabela's, if I'm not mistaken, it was somewhere around 80 bucks okay. when at the time of purchase. Keep everything packed in here. Now, if I actually grab it and leave, it may be a little bit different, just like I've got the machete, uh, but I've also got a belt um, with canteens. So I, you, this usually goes on my side. Um, I'll take, pull these all out first and then I'll okay. show you. Um, I've got better ones and bigger, heavier duty ones like in the vehicle, but for traveling, you want something light. I mean, you don't want to be bogged down with a lot of weight. So these here are like inexpensive, just paracord handle, um, just a small hatchet. And it's just a small lightweight, but it get the job done if you needed it to. Uh, same thing with the straight knife. This one here would automatically go on my side uh, in a situation like that, not in the pack. Um, and then like if you're out into the wilderness or wherever you're at, this would come really handy with a serrated edge. It's very good. At, cutting wood and stuff like that um sometimes i'll have a shovel in there i don't have a the compact shovel in there now it's actually my vehicle right now um, but sometimes i'll have it in there i'll just lay these out is this all i'll just lay these out as i go perfect um, and these are inexpensive i always keep a lot of the, these carabiner clips. carabiners yeah keep them as you can see all over because if i'm going i want to be able to clip stuff on me and go and I'll have different accessories that I can clip and go with. We'll just start right here. I'll just put these to the side as we go. But I keep the, the, the clips on there so I can just hang stuff as I go. Different items, stuff like that, whatever I may need. Uh, I'll just show you the, this part of the pack. Um, it's just some of the handy stuff that's real quick. There's just some pepper spray there, pepper gel. This is like a, a very loud whistle, like if you're in bear country, something like that. So you don't want to startle a bear. Um, so I just keep those hung on there, and I got plenty of room I can hang everything on. Um, I'm gonna set um, this here is very handy. Like I say, I don't carry a lot water or really much food with me because um, I think if you're on a run like that, if you got to get away, you got to bug out. You don't want to have to carry everything with you because you can only carry so much food and water. It's gonna weigh you down and bog you down. So this is life straw, um, and to make a couple different variations of this. I got this one because you can actually, some of them are just the straw that you can just suck the water directly out of the, the stream or puddle or whatever. This one here, you can actually just reach down in and dip in any water supply, uh, river, creek, whatever. Uh, screw it on. And this, this is the filter here that you can change. And no matter how contaminated the water is, you can drink it and it'll be purified. Um, this filter right here is good for about 26 gallon safe. Uh, but they're very easy to change. So, because I figure if you're moving, you need to be able to survive on the move. Um, and you're not going to be able to carry a 42 pack of Walmart water with you. So you got to be able to get water as you go. Uh, and that's the reason that I have that. I'm just going to go through real quick so it won't take very long and bore you. But I'll just show you a few things. Um, I do carry a little power pack, which is a solar panel. It's a small, small face, but if you got a good day of sunlight, you can get three-fourths of the way charged in one day, uh, which is not ideal, but it's enough to get your cell phone up if you need it um, or something like that. Uh, and you may not even have phone service, but if you do, that's handy. 
I also keep a bag of all adapters for any phone, not just the personal phone I carry, but I keep the Android, the older ones, the newer ones. I keep the iPhones, any charger adapter that I may need in case I would uh, find a phone on the way or have to use another phone uh, in a situation. So I keep all of those in there also. Um, light. I keep a, a very bright light uh, in it. So you got to have a flashlight. Must have, especially if you're, you know, no matter where you're going. If you're in the wilderness, woods, desert, or, you know, even in urban areas, you're still going to need a flashlight. And I keep just a headlamp, too. So, got some different lights. And some batteries. Got to have some extra batteries. And, and you can tailor your bag. Depends on what where you're at, your environment, what's going on. Because uh, I change mine. Depends on where I'm at. I've changed it like when I lived in the Philippines or when I'm on the road or when I'm here or when I'm back east in West Virginia. I change it out to, to tailor to fit my situation to fit my environment. Um, so I keep some of these hot hands because in a si certain situation, if you're out in elements, those could come very in very good hand. So we need those. I keep just a multi-tool. It's just like any standard multi-tool. So I keep one of those in there, a flint to make spark. Some of those multi-tools can be very expensive. Is Some yours is yours just uh, uh, mid or oh, low this, end? This is right in the forty-five, forty-nine dollar okay. range. For this so the one. reason I mention is because some people say, "Oh, I can afford it." Um, I so don't have like, an expensive one either, but I do have one. Right. And so it's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. better to have the very expensive, but they can run up to yeah. two hundred dollars, I think. Oh, some of them can. Oh, yeah. yeah. And cheap. Just keep some extra lighters. Yeah. Because you can always use fire. So. That's quite a bit of stuff so far out of this one compartment. You can get a lot of stuff in a small bag if you pack it right. The next compartment, I like this one because it's got a lot of separations in it. Um, I said I don't carry much food. I do carry a few, and I'll just show you. I keep like four or five like cliff bars. That'll get you by until you can get to food. And my thinking on this, right or wrong, I don't know, but... You know, I'm thinking we can go 30 days without food if we have to. We can go three days without water. Um, so water's more, to me, more important than the food, okay? So I figure it depends on where I'm at. If I'm back east in my element in the woods, um, I have no problem finding food in the woods. Out here in the desert, it's a little, I'm new to me, so it's a little bit different. But, um, and out here, water would be more difficult, so... When I go into an area, I usually try to get a map for that area um, so I can see if there's any streams, any lakes, anything like that. So I kind of scope it out so I know approximately how far I am from water because uh, that's you need to know that. Um, but I keep, in this park of here, I just keep binoculars. These are just bush and elm. They're not real expensive ones, but they're like a hunting grade binocular. So... You need to definitely need a good set of binoculars. These are 10 by 42. And you don't have to go pay $400 for a set of binoculars. A set of $100 binoculars will work just fine um, in a situation. I ca do carry a U.S. military-grade compass um, that illuminates at night, self-illuminating. Um, I know we have compasses on our phones, but if something happens and you don't have your phone, and you don't know how to read a compass to set your heading, you know, if you're out in the woods or in a desert, you know, that could be, that could be your life. So I recommend a real good compass and learn how to use a compass. Um, this one here, somewhere around the $80, $90 range. I know you can get a $10, $20 one, but this one does, the face illuminates at night. Um, and this is the same one that our US military uses, same brand and everything. Um, so it is a good one. You know, you, you could get a little bit of money wrapped up into a bag like this, but when it comes down to it, if you need it, you need something that you can, re you know, rely on. This is not as important, but I have one. It's a range finder. It's a laser range finder. So it's also made by Bush Chanel. And you can get these anywhere from $80 up to three or 400 just depends on what you want, even higher. Um, but you just basically look through it. 
press the button and whatever you got to crosshairs on, it'll tell you how many yards away it is. So it could come in handy. Depends on what situation you're in. But always carry And I'm sure everything here you could find on Amazon. Amazon, a lot of the stuff, I'm big in Cabela's. Even a lot of my clothing and stuff come from Cabela's. But yeah, between Amazon, Cabela's, I mean, a few things from Walmart. I mean, you know, you can put something together. And like I say, every bag can be different. I mean, just because this works for me and this is what I think I need, you may not. If you're going to be in a big city trying to survive, some of the, I mean, some of the stuff you're not going to need. You don't need binoculars and a rangefinder and a compass. Um, you may concentrate more on food or, you know, or water or, or whatever. But whatever environment you're in, you need to be dressed accordingly so you'll blend in. You don't want to stand out in a situation in a situation we're talking about when if everything goes bad so and there could be several situations like that even a natural disaster could put you on your own you'd be fending for yourself i always carry paracord i think if you get on to, and i haven't watched a lot of videos on this i just kind of did this on my own but um i think most people have all this paracord in there just in case and i have this is just some people carry a tent not sleeping bag and all that i don't this is just you can use it as an emergency blanket or emergency shelter and it's that space age material that's supposed to keep you warm and this is big enough where you can actually make like a little pup tent with it run the paracord through it between trees or something and then either stake it down or um, tie it down and you can just get in it just get out of the shelter because in extreme temperatures uh, just like the temperatures we've been having now even in texas and other places and back where i'm from they've been having some days you know it don't even get up to double digits during the day so if, if you had to bug out and leave on foot in that type of weather um you got to be prepared for that because you're not going to survive you know over a few hours out and something like that so i kind of pri prioritize you want shelter a way to keep warm a way to keep dry first second i would say water because you can only go three or four hours if you're out in the elements you can get three days with water you can get 30 days without food so to me the food's not a high priority um, i keep a full rain suit pants and jacket this uh this is not a great one i picked it up at walmart for about 30 bucks uh, not that expensive one of the main things is you're going to have to have a good first aid kit. Um, these tables are getting full. I've got a pretty extensive first aid kit. I've got a snake bite kit, bite and sting. And then I've got this one here. I'm going to narrow this down and make this a little bit smaller because it does take up a lot of room. But I just bought this. It's a 170 item. And I've added to it. I mean, it's got bandages i mean i stuck a nightstick in here i mean i've got you know gloves tape i mean just anything you need first aid cream first aid guide i've got some bigger bandages but you definitely need something like that how much was this no i can't i can't okay. remember okay. on that but the first aid kit you can get small pack ones probably for 15 bucks and you can get a pretty decent one for 25 30 dollars so i mean they're not too bad it just depends on what all you get this um snake bite uh, kid, I think it was like 15 bucks. So, but I figure out here, well, really anywhere, if you're in the woods or in the desert, that would be good to have, especially if you're on the move. So, we're getting to the end. One compartment left. And if you notice so far, I have, don't have any clothes here. I don't carry a lot of clothes because I'm figuring if you're bugging out and trying to get away that's the last thing i'm worried about um but like i say you do want to blend in and it's nice to blend in and try to keep your identity secret so i always put a baseball cap in there um you know just kind of just to cover up and not stand out and you just put anything in there um i, I was thinking it almost looked like it said cincinnati red so oh, I'm like, okay. Whoa, okay. Uh, I do have, this is the same brand as my backpack, but I got a lot of this send gear. I've got the hiking pants and shirts and stuff like that. But it's just a lightweight jacket that I keep in there. Some of the clothes, not much. And you may want to put more clothes in there. Um, 
to me it's just not a priority in a situation like that i do keep these are handy these are like waterproof bags uh, i've got a couple different sizes i think i've only got one of them in here but it's airtight and it's waterproof so the clothes that you do take i'd recommend putting it in a bag like this dry bag it's a dr yeah keeps it totally dry mm -hmm. that's what you're called dry bags and i don't keep a whole lot in here um i keep a couple extra pairs of socks underwear uh some long um long johns just in case your long underwear thermal insulated just in case you're out in the elements um i've got uh, what's the next scarf gator i've got one of those in there um and that's all i've got in here i don't keep very much at all clothes wise i did used to keep a pair of pants uh and a shirt an extra change but then i took them out uh, because I thought some of the other stuff was more important. Now, if I go get a bigger bag, I probably will keep at least one, maybe two changes of clothes in there, but that's it. Um, you got to stay clean a little bit. So I do have these wipes. These ones are called camp combat wipes. They're scentless. Um, so I just keep those in there to clean up if you have to. Wear on the road. You got to have that. You gotta have some TP, even if you're in the woods. You took the middle out, didn't you? I always, these ones I just smashed because they were soft. But even in my vehicle, I normally take the centers out and smash them down just to save room. So, but I just keep just a trash bag. You never know, you can put something in it, you might need it. And I keep some mask, I just got some mask in there. So, and I think right now that's the only thing I have in there. Well, uh, I do have that. That's just, I normally don't even carry that in there. That's just a little battery powered fan. I think I used that the last time I was camping is the reason that's in there. But I think that is everything. So that's the bag and that's everything that was in it. As you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff. So if you even go up a little bit bigger size, you could get a lot of stuff in there. So I figure it's enough to survive to get by on. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. For showing you're your welcome. bug out bag. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any questions about anything? Or? I don't have any questions, okay. um, yeah. but I'm sure in comments there will be so. I'm sure there will. Uh, yes. That's good. I'll answer any of my can. Uh, like I say, every bag can be different. There's a lot of stuff here you may not even use in yours. You just got to tailor to your situation, to where you're at, your environment, where you think you're going to be. And mine changes. When I was in Florida, it was totally different. I'm out here, it's totally different. I'm back in West Virginia, um, it's different. Um, in West Virginia, this is basically what I have in mind because there's so many streams, um, you know, uh, rivers and ponds. I don't need to worry about water as long as I got this. Now out here, it's a little bit different. But then again, I can't carry a lot of water with me. I do have a hip pack that goes around um, that I do carry. And in a situation where I had to bug out on foot, I would have it also. And some of these items would be on it. The knives, the hatchet, stuff like that would be on it. Um, and some of these items would be clipped on the outside of this pack if I was going cross country on foot, um, especially if I'm in, you know, in the woods somewhere. Um, and back east where I'm from, if something happens, that's where I would be. I'd feel safe. I feel safe that I could disappear in the woods and stay for several weeks with what I got right here, and no worries. Um, and that's where I'm most comfortable, if I got to the mountains in the woods. So, But that's where I've got mine tailored to right now. So, Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks so much.